Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is your girl Jody, 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 Jody. And tonight, tonight we are going to be talking about, reading about, discussing a group. Street. We 
could hear all the dogs in the houses barking incessantly. But then he walked out of sight and seemed to disappear into thin air. Hey, that, that, that's, that's crazy gravy.
boyfriend is from Rosebud, and I'm assuming this is either South Dakota or Iowa. He was out in Chamberlain driving around years ago during the blood moon. His brand new, device, new vehicle suddenly stopped. I mean brand new, right off the showroom floor. No reason, no rhyme, no nothing. He had plenty of gas. Everything was fine. He was on a gravel road, heading back to Rosebud when he saw a tall man running beside his vehicle, then in front of it. He called his grandmother and she told him to immediately come home and smudge. I asked his grandmother about it who is from Standing Rock. She told me something similar has happened to her before. For a while they were putting up blankets over the windows because she was saying that the tall man was looking in the windows. Reservation dogs were freaking out. You could hear their barks change directions as whatever they were barking at would move frequently and with sheer speed. I could go on, but I'm sure you get the idea. When I read your comment, it shook me. As a child, my niece, who my parents adopted after her parents died, would tell us about a nightmare she had about a clown living in our herring cupboard from, I'm from UK. You could call it a boiler room in the US. We also just thought it was bad dreams. My partner, on one of the times she slept at my mother's house, had told me she was having dreams of a clown living in the airing covered. No idea how to explain that one. There was not a clown in there. It was just dusty, but it did have a weird feeling when you walked in as if something was there. Something that maybe adults couldn't see and a child I could. It was really strange. similar to what happened to me when I was only nine years of age. I was in Sutherland, also in the UK, for those that do not know. I saw a clown as well in my grandmother's room, sitting watching TV, and in the TV was a hand puppet of a clown. The hand puppet stopped, pointed at me, and the clown got up and started walking to me. Oh my god. What the hell? had razor-sharp teeth like a shark. I screamed and ran into the living room where everyone else was. Of course, no one believed me and told me I was just imagining it. I wasn't. I remember it to this day, because when they looked, the spirit was gone. Never saw it again after that instant. So, who knows? Let me 
several times. 
sometimes right before people pass or prisoners pass, the inmate talks about a kid in the room. However, it's the ones who are delirious before death. Also, there have been several mentally altered offenders who are not necessarily drug adult, but actual mental status is severe. They have talked about or completely lost their shit over the kid that was under their bed and her running around and fucking with them. The guy became, became so violent one time we had to discharge him from the hospital and put him back to his unit, not solely over the kid, but it seemed like a part of the problem. Occasionally an inmate with the full mental capacity would mention the TV in the other room was so loud sometimes he could hear it and said it sounded like a kid show or something with kids talking. I kept my hallway quiet. I always wanted to hear what was going on. I definitely didn't want to hear TV as I was on duty. So I know there was no TV playing in this hall. There's certainly arguments that can be made that word of mouth got back to the units about the kid's story, but neither officers nor nurses made a habit of telling stories to inmates. Besides, we admit defenders from dozens of different units. on the wall, not by the beds. They're for staff, more than patients and psych. Going off and patients sound asleep. Call lights going off and locked. Empty rooms, door alarms ringing when no one is out of bed. Automatic flushing toilets flushing over and over and over an empty room. Automatic, 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 automatic paper towel dispensers extending just before you enter. Room. All of this happens fairly frequently, but randomly. Once I heard the overhead alarm while in an empty and locked room, but it stopped just before I exited and none of my co-workers heard it elsewhere in the unit, even though it was definitely, definitely loud. The most dramatic was seeing a person leave an empty unit in full nursing whites. During the early 2000s, when dress requirements for all staff was blue scrubs. At that time, I thought it was a really old nurse. She looked solid and real. I found out later that many patients in that unit before, it was close to asked about the other nurse dressed in complete white. That had offered to get them meds or something and never returned. If you don't believe in the supernatural, you always you will after working third shift in a psych hospital. Caught in the third shift, Jesus. In any shift, I'm sorry. I've worked in many of them doing their billing and accounting and basically restructuring of them, and I'll tell you there is. I have talked to patients that have been dead for years thinking that they came to the counter having pulled up a record that I was going to put in archive and having them come and dispute their death. I had a woman come out completely normal talking to me, completely lucid, and when I walked back not even 20 minutes later after being in the um, the nurse's station messing with the computers and their, you know, um, HR record reporting software. I came back. Now, this woman was talking completely lucid, and I went to go say goodbye, and she was comatose. And I turned to the nurse that was taking her blood pressure, and I said, I just spoke to her. She was out talking to me. And she looked at me like I was crazy and said, No, she hasn't been out of bed in years. I said, No. She was completely out of bed talking to me. We were talking about her her daughter never comes to visit and never brings her grandkids. And that's when she looked at me out and she said, How do you know all this? I said, Because she told me. She says, There's no way this woman told you. I said, I know about her grandkids, her daughter that never visits, the red, curly-haired woman. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. That's all I got from her. She was going on about her daughter's beautiful red, curly hair. And the nurse looked at me and said, this is impossible, and walked away, leaving me perplexed, confused, and scratching 
in my hand. 
the stairs to engage in a game of pool with a couple friends and my parents. The entire class shattered in my hand as if to evaporate into thin air. There was no glass, there was no beer, there was years ago, my mom's stepdad died. He was basically her father. Real dad walked out when she was nine. There was a gathering at the house following the funeral. Phones ring. My mom picks it up. Here's a male caller. Say her name in an interrogative fashion like, Susan, Susan. She was sure, absolutely positive it was his voice. She, she panicked and hung up. The caller never called back and the reverse dial pulled up a previous number to someone she knew had called much earlier. Essentially, the call from beyond did not happen as far as the call company was concerned. To this day, she believes it was him and regrets panicking and hanging up. My other grandfather died in 2004 from complications following colon surgery. He was in his late 90s, so it was a good run. Was in the hospital following his surgery. My dad and aunt had a gut feeling it might be a 50 50 chance he pulled through, given his age and his physical condition. So they were absolutely present. He wakes up and asks when he got back, they ask him to explain. He said he had a dream that he was on a road trip in an Airstream trailer with a buddy of his whom he had falling out with 50 plus years ago. He was driving, they were blinded by a bright light in a wind windshield. Then he woke up. A few moments later, after having a full, normal, regular conversation, he closes his eyes and passes away. Come to find out, he and his buddy had always wanted to do a cross-country road trip, but had some kind of falling out and never spoke again. My grandmother remembered it happened after World War II. Must have weighed heavily on him. When I was six, my paternal grandfather passed away suddenly from cardiac arrest, and I was extremely devastated. During, during his funeral, I had a written letter to him, addressed to him, and secretly decided to print it along with the other paper offerings and cheese that we were going to offer him. I'm Asian and burned, uh, and burned offerings as part of the funeral ritual. The day after the funeral, my grandmother's house phone rang, and I answered. Deep breathing before the male vo voice called out my Mandarin name. I was convinced it was my grandfather's voice. I freaked out and hung up. I ran to my grandmother to tell her what happened. She was calm. <coughs> when I told her about it, sadly, he never called back. Moments after that, a huge black moth butterfly bigger than the size of a human palm flies into the house and lands on my grandfather's sitting chair. It remained there the entire day without moving. Despite family talking loudly and walking around the house constantly, my grandmother told the family that she believed that my grandfather's spirit has returned to the house for the last time. She even turned on the TV and left a cup of tea next to the moth. The whole thing felt so surreal. Working on ships, um, cryptids are very real. There's something that happens in the middle of the Arctic, or the middle of a ship, in the fog, far away from land, far away from anyone to understand what's capable of happening. Energy in itself 
is so powerful when you're around that much water. You never know. Years ago, during a South American season, I used to hang out with the Brazilians, fun and cool people. One was a gift shop manager. He would rant and rant about his team, how they are lazy and how they keep trying to weasel out of working because they claim to see a little girl running around the gift shop. One night, we were having coffee with the head of the photography department and his extra salty talk about how I'll have to do an extra couple of hours because of his damn lazy team. In the middle of the night, I get a call from the photo manager. She tells me our friend is in her cabin crying and shivering. I run right over, thinking he got some bad news from home or something. It turns out he was working in his office. The door faces a long mirror that covers most of the wall clothes section. And after hearing giggling, he saw the shadow of a child through the reflection as if she was leaning to look into the door while trying to hide. Only in the reflection, he says, he jumped up and ran out, the giggling, the sounds of tiny feet running around the shop and into the casino, which was on the same deck. Scared the knock out of him. I'm not big into the paranormal, but the following day I mentioned this to my boss, and she told me that 20 years back, a little girl came out of the theater with her parents. She was running ahead of them around the gift shop, but eventually she went to the casino, coming out at the atrium. A drop with glass lifts that go from deck 12 to 5, so a good drop. She leaned over the railing to look down, lost her balance, and <gasps> fell, breaking her neck. Responders on uh, marine vessels are documented these sightings or experiences by these responders. No, of course not, because that would mean that they would have to do more explaining. Somebody is 
is saying on this thread that what verifies him the most is that he hears all the time that after we die, that's it, there's nothing left. Well, how is that possible? In a scientific way, energy is neither created nor destroyed, so it has to go somewhere. Our souls are our energy. Without our soul, we are just a shell. Our soul commands and runs through every orifice, every vessel, every cell in our body. It is not, we are not just flesh and bone, my, my dear friends, we are not, we are not just flesh and bone, remember that. And you are more powerful than you think you are. Find that power in, from within you. We're all different and we all offer a unique gift. We just have to find it and accept it and believe in it. We are all very special. When I was only 14, my family had just moved to a house in the suburbs. of open space in the house at a huge, huge backyard. One night, uh, I opened our sliding door to take out the trash, um, and I saw twelve figures walking towards the house. It was about ten o'clock at night. The best way I could describe them is they were all black, slim, and they just don't exist in that area. They were also walking on four feet, but when I opened the door and turned on the light, they stood up on two feet and began to run. Now I turned and shut the door before I completely saw them run, but I got a good enough glance to know this wasn't any regular animal like a deer. Besides, there was never any deer in our neighborhood or any that I've ever seen run on two feet. So this is definitely something different. Fifteen years later, son was about three years old. We were eating out and out on the town and he got a bit restless. I decided to take him for a walk. I held the door open. He got away from me and made a break for it. Pedestrian area. So safe. He vaulted into an adjacent site which had a ruined chapel with the info boards for tourists. I found him staring at the chapel ruins. What are you doing? His reply. A long time ago I got married here. What? He looked at me with the huge, big blue eyes. Tears in them. And with an aura of an older human being. Dead in my eyes, dated a long time ago. And then he switched, just flicked off, and he was three-year-old with energy to burn. I was off running. My cousin is a toddler, and I was in junior high, getting into witchy things like past lives and dream interpretation and whatnot. Why is this always a witchy thing? I don't know. I'd read it that young people sometimes remember their past lives. At Christmas gathering, I asked my youngest cousin who. They were before they were holly. They looked me right in the eye without hesitation and said I was white from the northwest. Then they went back to eating dinner and that was that. It was bizarre. It's about the age of two or three. I've said this before. My daughter had recollection of her past life so clear that she was not really in this life. She says until about seven years old is when she can start remembering things. And she doesn't, she doesn't remember much before that. Except for a doll with black hair, which she never had. We were talking about it last night, which I find very strange because she never had a doll with black hair. Anyway, she would tell about her dead sisters, how much her mother didn't like her, and that her father was a pretty nice. 
nice man, but it was her husband that she missed the most. She had taken care of him, and she had died in a car crash. And then one day, I mean, she would tell everybody this, the people at daycare, the people at the store, the grocery store, the mall, my parents, I mean, she had, she knew the names when they were born, what they looked like, but then one day, and I never said anything about it because I didn't want to put anything into her mind, one day, Like, is it? 
experience I had that I'll tell you after I read this. My brother, when he was three, passed as we were passing a house. While the house hunting starts screaming, that's where I had a heart attack, that's where I died. He had never heard of one nor anyone in our family had ever had one at that point. We asked him what one even was and he looked up at us like we were stupid and said, it's a heart attack. Duh. <laughs> I was probably five or six and I had I would pass by houses and I could explain them to the T. I could explain the backyard, what was there, but this one house specifically, and it, this was all in Ohio, I made my parents stop it. I said, I have lived here before. I have been to this house. It was up on a hill. It was yellow and it had a white picket fence. in them. And I said, I hate those things. I can't believe they're still putting them up. My mom said, hate what? Those stupid baskets. They get bugs in them and you have to water them and it gets dirt all over the, that beautiful porch. My mom was like, what are you talking about? I mean, I was, I was little. I had never been to that house in this life. I was so sure. I was like, I need to pull up, pull up this driveway. My dad's like, no, we're not pulling up this driveway. I said, I want to just see the backyard if the swing set is still there. Apparently, I had this swing set for my kids. I don't know. And this beautiful rose garden. I would not shut up about it. So on the way back from, I, we were going to some relative's house, my dad was like, oh my gosh, we're just gonna go up and see if there's a damn rose garden in the back, because I was on and on about the rose garden. We pull up. Sure enough, I run to the backyard. I said, see? The roses. The roses. I was little. <laughs> the roke. I used to call it rocus, roses. 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 <laughs> and I think I was getting locusts and roses mixed up, but I got back in the car and I said, I told you so. <laughs> but the swing set was gone, and apparently I was and I just, I was just like shaking my head. I can't believe it. But I remember that to this day. I remember it clearly. I could tell you the inside of the house I was dark wood and had this weird yellow paisley wallpaper I never liked. And then up the stairs was a dark wood also. But Instead of painting it white, which I wanted it painted, you know, like from step to step, it was painted yellow. And I don't know who convinced me of this. As you go upstairs, there's this like greenish short carpet. Now my mom said, well, that's what it kind of looks like your grandma Long's house. I said, no, this was a specific color green. It was a dark, dark green. Not like grandma Long, she had blue carpet. But it was the same kind, that short carpet. I said, upstairs, there's three bedrooms and one bathroom. I know this is a pretty big house, but I was so, it was not so much about the house inside. It was the outside flowers. And to this day, I loved garden. In Mississippi, I had 42 different types of roses. I mean, I built my own beds, dug them out by hand. I love roses. So I cannot wait to start planting my roses here. Because they are just a passion of mine and honestly I don't know where I get that from. I mean, it must have been from that life and I don't know which life that is. <laughs> you know, I've done that past life regression and I just can't. I don't have that, that life in my mind. I can't find that life. I was working at a summer camp in the Pacific Northwest one year. On the third or fourth night, I was jogging alone back from the staff campfire to the cabin where the campers and my co-counselors slept. I'm walking
walking in this big, grassy throughway that has some taller reeds separating it from the shore of the Puget Sound. It's, I don't know, probably 2 a.m., a full moon, absolutely beautiful. As I'm jogging along this pathway, I see this person in the reeds. It's wearing a white gown and has no face, just hair. I only notice it because as I approach it, it stood up from a crouched position, backed up jokedly a few steps, then crouched down again, but I could still see it crouching there, like it was waiting for something. Its movements told me that it was not human. My knees gave out and I fell flooded with fear as I collapsed. I tried to run back to my cabin, but my legs would not work. I crawled and scrambled there on all fours. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my mouth, just gasping. I finally got to my cabin and fumbled and fumbled and fumbled until I finally worked the doorknob for what I felt like at least two minutes before I could even open it. I closed the door and stood there as I pulled myself up for a while. I didn't hear anything but my heartbeat. I barely slept. At some point later on that night, I remember laughing, thinking, oh, <laughs> this is so stupid. It was just one of those campers playing a joke on me. I was hysterically laughing at myself for 20 minutes, but then fell asleep. The next morning, I realized that no campers returned to the cabin. They could have potentially been out there being that night. I asked all of them one by one, and all of them said they had not gone out to be the previous night. Oh, had this. This specific camp was overtly for non-religious, skeptical-minded staff and campers, of which I was, and still largely am, but I have no explanation for what I saw that night. Honestly, it still scares the shit out of me. just having a conversation literally minutes ago about a paranormal experience and the ones we've had. We are currently on the Washington coast near Astoria. My friend told me a story almost identical to yours. Driving at night near a reservation north of Seattle, woods all around the car. He approached a figure crouched down and facing away from the road. He stopped to ask if they were okay as he thought it was a child. Respond, so he tapped his car horn. The figure turned its head to look at the car, still crouched by the road. My friend said it had no face. This was about 15 or 20 years ago, and he remembers like it was yesterday. A weird coincidence. Yes, my sighting was north of Seattle, near Bow, Washington. The woods were very dense next to the beach where the camp was built.
of my 
vision kind of 
scared me 
more than this. So as I go, I'm going towards this tree line. And the feeling is starting to get way more intense. The sense of urgency to leave. The knots in my stomach. My intuition. Call it what you want. My dogs are starting to act weird. Everything is odd. These are experienced trail dogs. They don't get weirded out like that. They're bent to my legs, crawling low, but almost in a whisper. I realize that I left my walking stick down by the tree structure. Crap. Oh well, I don't want to go back down to get it in back, then back up. I got a quarter mile or so past the tree structure and the feeling of being watched was unbearable. Alright, I'm a rational human being. I'm thinking, okay, it's probably a huge cat. I head back down. The rational part of my brain told me to slow down my flight response. Well, that was a different story. Full speed down a 30 to 40 degree slope. I get down to the tree structure and meadow and I look down and my walking stick is gone. Like, nowhere to be seen. And the thing is, it's pretty distinct. It's made of aspen. I'd have picked it up somewhere else. There are no aspen trees in this part of the forest. I am terrified. Something is down there that would pick up a walking stick. And it's not a goddamn cat, bear, or any other animal. I felt like I was being chased, but I never saw anything, never heard anything either. I guess, yes, you could argue that it was a big cat, but uh, I'm telling you what. It was only after I passed that tree structure that looked like a teepee. It was definitely a built structure in some way. I can't explain it. And how do you explain my stick going missing? I was nearly to the parking lot before the feeling of being watched and chased left me. I will never go back there. Still thinking about it gives me the creeps. Set me tumbling down a mountain. 
this point. 
decided to head home and took a familiar road past a friend's house and hit the asphalt about 10 seconds in. Everyone in the car turned to the right at once and saw what looked like a massive dog sitting by a gate 20 feet off the road. This gate showed No nightcrawler. I had no idea what that was at the time, but 
many of my friends, but from then on, we have all felt something basically stalking us in that same area. Like, now it knows who we are. I was at a park with my then-girlfriend that has a neighbor on one side in the Fresno area. A few miles of pretty dense forest was on the other side. We were stargazing as we sat in this opening near the neighborhood. I heard a rustling in the patch of the shrubbery that sounded like a person stomping around. Immediately, I get up to investigate it. This area is known for sketchy activity, drug deals, and the like. But what I saw made absolutely no sense. I start to feel like or imagine like I imagined it. I saw what looked like a person hunched over with a white cloth over them walk out of the bushes and stand on this path that goes around the entire park. I turned to my girlfriend.
was walking my dog. He started crawling, barking at the house across the street. I slowed down trying to get a look at what in the heck he was seeing. There was a whitish gray boomerang shaped object flapping its wings really slow like a manta ray in the water moving way too fast circling our neighbor's house zoomed around the house disappeared into the backyard and going back around the front five times as I stood staring at whatever the hell this thing was it was dark outside yet there was enough light to see that it did not have any definable features. It was just an amorphous boomerang-shaped thing. An amorous boomerang-shaped thing. Amorous boomerang-shaped thing. It was flying with one wing pointed towards the ground and one towards the sky vertically. People say it was an owl or a bat. I was old enough 
because I had always go outside with a knife or machete. One night, though, I was taking out the trash. 11, 12 o'clock at night, the trash can was a good 50 feet from the house, surrounded by bushes and shrubs. I put the trash in the can and went to head back when something reached from the shrubs and latched it off as any animal and 
these uh, deer couple herds that grazed in the backyard and I tell you it just wasn't later until I realized that none of the herds showed up during the time I saw whatever it was. None of the deer had a color mutation either. At least the quote unquote regulars didn't. I ignored it for a few days. Then about a week later I was sleeping when I awoke in the middle of the night having no idea what my dog likes looking, looking, looking out. I see my dog. He's on high alert, looking out the window. This time I grab my glasses and look where he was fixated on. I see this thing again. I got a better look at it this time. It had fur so black its body was not really visible. five years old in 1995. I woke up on several occasions to find my toys going nuts around the room. I had a sizable collection of little toy matchbox cars that are usually left lying around on one of those little mats we all had with the streets, etc. At times I would wake up from noise and turn over to see my cars moving around and suddenly
she was young, she and her dad woke up to some woman calling their name. Flash forward to now, my grandmother comes over to comfort us because we had to be put our bed to sleep. We kind of randomly brought up the story of my mother. Grandmother freaked out. Her face turned pale. Turns out a woman's voice occasionally calls out her name. However, it's a different voice every time, but they all belong to a female. It's strange, because my mom and grandmother have only heard it once decades ago, but the voices are still heard. Occasionally, my grandmother, even after she moved, still hears them. I don't know if the voices in the doll are related, but I'm glad we sold.
as a child. I never believed in ghosts. I was never afraid. But when I was an adult, all this changed. I was a missionary in Chile some years ago. I lived in a small town called Makali in a little house with a few other sister missionaries. The house seemed like it had started small, like one room small in maybe the 50s and been added to as the years went on. All year a bathroom with plumbing there. The weird thing about this house was then that around 3 a.m. every single night the air would change. It felt like something was terribly wrong. I couldn't quite put my finger on what. The only way I'd been able to verbalize it is spiritual nausea. Like severe motion sickness, but not in my body, rather in my, I don't know, soul. Then we would hear child's footsteps and laughter in the hall. None of us dared to leave our rooms in the wee hours of the morning because once you open the door to the hall, that nauseous feeling multiplied tenfold. I would have chalked it up to stress dreams, but everyone experienced the same we decided to tell, not tell the next group of fish missionaries about La Nina. They asked about it anyway after being awakened by her laughter. Other weird things happened at night too. One missionary felt thin, disembodied hands touching her back. I experienced sleep paralysis and saw a tall, antlered figure standing, staring at me in bed. Children's toys appeared disappeared and all. Some of our neighbors told us that there was a nearby witch who didn't like us. And we occasionally found dead animals in the yard, whether it was our doing or a carbon monoxide problem or an actual haunting. I have no clue. But I was distracted. Us from sleep enough to make us useless during the day. House blessings and prayers did nothing. Eventually we were authorized to change apartments in the events. 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 Stopped. I don't know. I hope to this day that the thing was never really there to do harm, but I definitely sort that has to see something myself before I believe it, and once I do see it, 
dining area from the bed. If the cats weren't playing, they would inevitably ended up in that area. Our apartment was very small, 700 square feet of that. The dining area was kind of central to the apartment layout. I hoped I would see them so I could call them to me. Dark, yet not pitch dark because the apartment i 
Anything again, but from then on, 